the next lecture in today's lecture we shall be discussing about this very beautiful poem 2.3 there is another sky by the very talented and famous poet emily dickinson so before beginning with the poem let us see the ice breakers as you see here the ice breakers question number 1 is life is an amalgam of happy and sad moments think of such moments in your life pair with your classmate and share both the aspects of life now life is an amalgam that means it's a mixture of happy and sad moments so your life is filled with both happy and sad moments i have not seen any person in my entire life that a person is only happy or a person is only sad in his life he is both happy as well as sad so we have to think of such moments in your life and you have to pair them with your classmate with the help of your classmate you have to share both the aspects of life now here there are two columns given as you can see one is for the happy moments while the second is for the sad moments so in the first here is given winning the first prize in a competition this is an example of a happy moment the next is sad moment sad moments is the losing your mobile bicycle or wallet now these types of happy and sad moments are part of your life okay so uh, the next one i have done for you see a uh, passing 10th standard for many of you uh, you will have that feeling that happy moment for in your life as every one of you are in 11th standard now so that passing 10th standard was a very happy moment for you and sad moment i have written feeling in 12th with very uh, least marks now uh, not everybody fails in 12th but there are some children who unfortunately fail but when they fail they fail with really low marks means just for maybe 10 marks 15 marks okay so this is like a sad moment for them next is buying something from your first salary or your first pocket money we can say that that is a very happy moment when whenever you get little money maybe it's your pocket money or it's your salary when uh, that amount is quite uh, good to buy something you usually buy things for others you especially your family you uh, buy things but the sad moment is that losing that item accidentally means if you have bought something with that pocket money or salary and suddenly uh, due to some accident you lose it it is a very sad moment for you so next is discuss with your partner and find proverbs idioms or phrases of similar meaning to the one given and fill them in the stars given below so especially uh, there are actually four stars given to you and a proverb is given to you and i have tried to solve this see here every cloud has a silver lining so this is uh, what is a similar meaning to this we have to write okay so the next is the stars don't look bigger but they do look bright brighter so this is also a type of proverb which is very close to this by the end of the poem you shall understand what is the meaning of all these things this proverbs and this ice breakers and how they are related to our poem so next is i like the night without the dark we'd never see the stars this is also a very beautiful thought a very beautiful uh, proverb let us see the next one we are all of us stars and we deserve to twinkle so the you till now by the end of this uh, four proverbs you must have got that little idea that what is what we are going to be discussing in this particular poem or what shall we be learning in this particular poem let us see the next let us see the next question when we look at the sky we find several objects they stand for something or the other so when we look at the sky there are many objects in the sky and they have a very deep significant meaning in our lives so complete the following table by finding the significance of the given objects one example is given to you so there are these four celestial bodies these are the heavenly bodies which are there in the sky and they are associated with some kind of the words so one is given to you for example the sun which means power heat energy commitment and etc the next is the moon moon stands for light that is harvest that it means a uh, good reap after what is it for the farmers then a voyager means uh, somebody who is traveling through the seas oceans and capability so moon also means somebody's capability or capacity the rainbow when you look at the rainbow its association is done with hope dreams diversity 
and somebody who's active okay the stars when you look at the stars we see that they are bright they are heavenly beautiful it may be related to comedy or acting and astronomy astronomy so these words are somewhere associated with this celestial bodies these four words so let us see the next one the colors mentioned in the hexagon given below are associated with something or the other discuss with your partner and fill in the blanks this one is especially done for you i have tried see colors are given uh, yes there are pink blue white black red and yellow are given to you and with them i have uh, written some words for example here it is pink flowers blue sky white is peace and it can be for dove black intentions you can say that evil intentions red moon the color of the moon and yellow fruit so this particular ice breakers are given to you and now you must have come to know that come to know that this particular poem is related with something to do with the sky so let us now uh, understand some information about the poetess that is emily dickinson and we shall begin with the explanation of the poem so, till, so, so let us now understand the, about the poetess that is Emily Dickinson. Now Emily Dickinson was born between 1830 to 1886. She was an American poet of the 19th century. So we are going to be discussing about the marvelous Emily Dickinson. She lived a lonely life. See, to understand this particular poem, we should understand the lifestyle or the life of the poetess. Some poems are related with many different types of themes which come out of the poet's or the poet's mind but some poems are usually autobiographical in nature and they are somewhere related with the poet or poetess's life so this particular poem is somewhere very close to the uh, this particular poetess that is emily dickinson so let us first understand the information given to this so she lived a lonely life so we can say that uh, emily dickinson lived a very the isolated and lonely life most of her poems are motivational and philosophical that means this particular poet though she was lonely and she is self isolated herself her poems are motivational and philosophical so she has also written over 1800 poems in her life now many there are many po what do you say poets in english literature who have written poems some of them have written 400 poems 500 poems 30 poems 40 poems but there is no other poet in english uh, literature like her who has written over 1800 poems and her poems are very beautiful compositions so they are unique to her era and are characterized by simple and short lines so these lines are very important what is the what do you say uh, speciality of her poems her poems were simple and short line she often used slant rhymes and unconventional uh, capitalization and punctuation so first let us understand what is the meaning of slant rhymes slant uh, rhymes have similar pattern but no identical words so this is actually close to a perfect rhyme in rhyming words what do we see that uh, in rhyming words we see that the words actually rhyme with each other the structure of the words or the sound of the words is actually close to each other but what happens in slant yes see this is an example of a slant rhyme here if you can see at the structure see how do i love thee let me count the ways i love thee to the depth and breadth and height okay my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being the ideal of grace so here you can see the ending words these words are rhyming to each other but the structure of the words is quite complex and very different okay they may be sounding like each other but still they are different for example ways and grace they may be closely uh, what is it sounding like each other okay identical sounds somewhat okay or they have a similar pattern like height and sight okay these two are different words they may uh, have a similar structure of what is a wording but they uh, sound little differently they are very close rhymes okay so close rhymes or these are the examples of slant rhymes so what uh, do you mean by unconventional capitalization and punctuation that means usually if the beginning or of the any any sentence that particular word has a capital letter okay but here she did not follow these particular rules okay she used to follow the old uh, what is a different type of rules 
ओके एंड देर वो नो पंक्चुएशन मार्क्स यू यूज टू यूज पंक्चुएशन मार्क्स इन वॉट इज एनी फॉर्मेट और एनी स्ट्रक्चर सो लेट एस सी हर पोएम्स आर द साम्स एंड द हिम्स ऑफ लाइफ इन ऑल इट्स शेड्स मीन्स दिस टू पर्टिक्युलर वर्ड्स साम्स एंड हिम्स सो लेट एस अंडरस्टैंड हर पोएम्स आर द साम्स एंड हिम्स ऑफ लाइफ इन ऑल इट शेड्स सो दिस पर्टिक्युलर वर्ड्स वी शुड फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड हाउ टू प्रोनाउंस दैम इट इज पी एस ए एल एम एस इट इज नॉट स्लाम्स इट इज बट साम्स एंड हिम्स हिम्स मीन्स दिस पर्टिक्युलर वर्ड इट इट इज प्रोनाउंस प्रोनाउंसड एज हिम्स सो साम्स एंड हिम्स आर एक्चुअली प्रेजिस एंड अडोरेशन ऑफ लाइफ मीन्स शी हैज ट्राइड टू अडोर हर लाइफ शी हैज प्रेज्ड लाइफ इन ऑल इट शेड्स मे बी इट मे बी हैप्पीनेस इट मे बी सैडनेस ओके सो यू अंडरस्टूड नाउ द यूज ऑफ आइस ब्रेकर्स इन अ पर्टिकुलर पोएम इज एक्चुअली टू गिव यू स्मॉल क्लूज रिलेटेड विद द पोएम इट सेल्फ सो एज वी प्रोसीड there is another sky is an inspirational poem with a message of never say die okay so this particular poem is an inspirational poem okay it is an petrarchan sonnet but so the structure of this particular poem is actually it is a petrarchan sonnet with an octave and sestet so first let us understand what is a sonnet okay a sonnet is a poem which consists of 14 lines okay but this example of a poem is a petrarchan sonnet which means this particular poem's construction is such as this octave the first lines there are eight lines and then it has sestet that are six a total of this is 14 lines so the poet is communicating to her brother through a letter so you understood that this particular poem is actually written to her brother okay emily dickinson's brother and she is trying to encourage her brother not to get depressed under any circumstances and pleads with him to return home means we can say that due to some uh what is say uh, accident uh, happened in this uh, brother's life he has uh, left his home and he's uh, went far away and she is trying to communicate with her brother and she is trying to tell him to get over his depression he is encouraging her uh, him and to return home back okay and he is she is pleading him to return home life is full of challenges one can tackle the challenges with a positive attitude this is what she wants to tell to her brother that's why she has written the poem there is another sky the poem ends on an optimistic note so the poem uh, ends with a optimistic note what is the optimistic note the bright note which says the brighter garden stands for choices that life offers to all so the people who are optimistic in life who see all the good things in their life those people get a chance to stand in the gra- uh, brighter garden means uh, those people get all the opportunities that life has to offer to them so now let us see the explanation of the poem there is another sky First of all let us read the poem there is another sky ever serene and fair and there is another sunshine though it be darkness there never mind faded forest austin never mind silent fields here is a little forest whose leaf is evergreen here is a brighter garden where not a frost has been in its unfading flowers i hear the bright bees hum pretty my brother into my garden come so let us now understand the explanation of the poem line by line there is another sky the meaning of this line is that there is another opportunity or there is another home to understand the poem better let us first see the background of the poem this particular poem is between the poetess emily dickinson and her brother austin now austin has left his home and he has gone to boston for further studies so this is actually between a small conversation through letters and a small conversation between the elder sister and the brother where the sister is trying to somewhere convince her brother to return home now where is the home now the poet is resides in amherst so this particular poem is between those two small villages the brother austin he is in boston and the sister is in amherst so she is saying that there is another sky now this also means that austin is feeling somewhere depressed in boston so she is trying to convince him to return back so there is another sky ever serene and fair and there is another sunshine 
though it be darkness there so she's trying to tell that austin is not happy in boston that means austin is feeling isolated and alone he feels that his life is filled with darkness maybe he's not going uh, what do you say well with his studies that's why he's feeling depressed so she's trying to convince her brother to return back to amherst and she's trying to tell him that everything here is serene and fair and there is another chance where he could be happy never minded mind faded forest austin never mind silent fields here is a little forest whose leaf is evergreen so this little forest is actually Emily Dickinson's home. So she is trying to tell Austin that even if there is darkness in Boston, there is light, hope, and happiness at her home, which is in Amherst. Now let us see the next stanzas. Here is a brighter garden where not a frost has been. So she is trying to tell her brother, younger brother, that there is no unhappiness in her home. Everything is bright. In its unfading flowers, I hear the bright bee hum. She's saying that I hear the flowers, singing flowers, and the flowers are not going to be old here. Everything is filled with happiness. I hear the bright bee. Here I see that her means her younger brother Austin is very happy. He'll be very happy at her home. I hear the bright bee hum. Pretty, my brother. So pretty is here the nickname for her brother Austin. She's saying that pretty, my dear brother, come back to my home. So she's also trying to tell that my home is your home. You'll be very happy here. Leave Boston and come because Boston is filled with darkness for him. He's not happy in Boston. Even it has opportunities, he'll still be unhappy there. So she's trying to tell her brother to come back, back to her home. Okay, this is like an invitation she's giving to her brother. An unorthodox method where there is a deep relationship of brother sister between Emily Dickinson and Austin. So, this poem is also a small note on their relationship, their lovely relationship. How Emily Dickinson really cares for Austin and she is trying to give him another sky.